Yo, if you like the intro, hit the thumbs up button below the video. This game is in low master against Yasuo. I take Conqueror, uh, just wanting to try this out. Cut down Scorch with Teleport, just a really pokey rune, but also a good all-in rune with Conqueror after level 6. And yeah, with this page, the plan is to kind of snowball against Yasuo and just keep killing him. It's a bit easier with Conqueror to go for all-ins when you're ahead and kill people. And yeah, let's see how this game went. So we start off the lane going for a late ward onto their wraiths at like 122, 125, that's fine. And notice how when I walk back to lane I enter the bush and then I run towards my side of lane before leaving the bush. That's very important to do otherwise champions can really poke you if you walk out too close on their side of lane. For example in this matchup, Yasuo started E so he could E through the minions and go for a good trade. He wins level 1 so you need to be very careful especially when he goes E start. Just chill back. Q him to get his passive and of course you want to take Scorch against Yasuo because when you uh, Scorch uh, works against his passive you get his passive and then Scorch applies after which is fine the damage is like whatever but usually they go bone plating and if you block their bone plating I think it's a big advantage uh, no matter if you have Electrocute or Conqueror it's still very good because then it will allow you to trade properly this game the Yasuo actually doesn't have bone plating so it's fine I miss the CS there which is annoying, it's because of my runes, I take haste, I miss another one. <laughs> but yeah, that's fine. Um, it's because I take the small haste, either way I think it's better. So right here I E him to get his passive, and then I'm just trading a bit in my minions, hugging my minions. He goes in again, which is fine, we aggroed them. So I auto E, auto again, realize I'm going to get level 3, so I flash and I Q the minion to get 3, and then I E auto scorch, <laughs> E auto scorch, and then W to kill him. Um, I knew I was going to get level 3, and he E's under the tower, which is something you can use against Yasuo's. So if you play a bit closer to your tower, um, it's actually very common that they will like E under the tower. Uh, just the Yasuo syndrome. You just have to be quite smart with it. Uh, and after that, we just shove, which is good. But I do have the Scorch, or not the Scorch, the Little Haste Rune, which is fine. Because I rush Eclipse, which gives a lot of AD anyways, and it kind of compensates a lot. So, yeah, I think it's actually better uh, when you rush Eclipse to go with this small haste in the runes. Um, also, another thing to note here is I go Boots and Double Longsword instead of Pickaxe. Uh, boots in general is very good to buy early on against these champs like Yasuo Yon, who rush tier 2 Boots. So, yeah, you should do that, I think. And Alice is coming now, so I just trade a bit. W over his Tornado, that's something you could do right there. He flashes, which is fine. But yeah, you W, E, and then you wait for his tornado animation, and then you can just jump right over his tornado. It's pretty easy, and then you can take a trade. So yeah, now I have a nice freeze, and this is how you want to play. Just last hit only, and zone him off the wave. There's no point just, you know, pushing, because it doesn't really do anything. Skana does this weird play, I'm like, well, this is pretty bad, but my wave is fine, so I can kind of chase a bit. And then I realized, oh, well, I'm not going to reach that guy because he flashed. And now I just run away, even though Alistair's dead. My wave's pretty good, and yes, we died. And I'm thinking, well, do I push this wave? Probably not, because even if I push it, I don't really have anything to buy. I don't want to buy a Warhammer because I want to save for pickaxe instead. Um, you know, it would put me down 400 gold on my pickaxe if I do that for 10 haste. Which is not really worth it, considering I have a bunch of haste in runes. So... Yeah, I just last hit these minions, wait for Yasuo to show up, and then when he does, we'll probably push again. So now that Yasuo is back in lane, um, I don't want to push too fast, so i got a slow push now. Just take it nice and slow, E him on his passive, there's something you can do against Yasuo, which is actually pretty decent because you can E while moving. Um, and then right there, when he E'd through, I reacted with WQW auto E straight away. Now I have conk stacks, I kind of want to keep them. But then I'm like, oh, well, my conk stacks ran out. And W, E, Q, because he has no uh, wind wall. I'll take level 6, so I just go in on that and kill him like that straight away. But, um, yeah, so I guess if I rewind, I want to show you a couple things. So, uh, yeah, right here. So when he is on this minion, I react straight away, like on his like uh, animation so I know exactly where he's going to land that's why I go in and I know everything's going to hit so that's something you can do against Yasuo you should do it when his passive is down 
and yeah like if he's eing in through a minion you can do your w backwards and then you hit an auto attack and e and just take your w and run um so that's a good combo it's like the main one against yasuo is when he uses e is when you can punish him uh as well as when his passive is down um but yeah and also the eing him in melee range so i guess if i rewind it again <laughs> a lot of rewinding but it's fine so right here when he walks up i e him and then i walk to the side it's good to do that because you can e while moving and if you're moving side to side against the yasuo and he's, and he's trying to like q you you know he's probably gonna miss because you know like that you can just keep walking side to side just going around right there i could have dodged that easily but you know if you keep doing side to side movements um <clears throat> It should be hard for him to hit his Q. So, yeah, it's pretty good to use that your E to get his passive, basically. Um, especially considering that early on, your E doesn't really do much damage. So, there you go. So, I end up getting a good recall. And I'm able to walk back to lane at a good timing where I can hold the wave. Um, I pickaxe, triple longsword, and boots. It's very, very good items at this stage, six minutes. So, we hold the wave, knowing that I'm just going to, you know, freeze and then I'm going to slow push. So that's basically a lot of the laning phases, just in general, um, as Yasuo stayed, I guess I'll talk about this. Alistair comes in and we kill him, I think. Let's find out. Use your spells on the Alistair CC so Yasuo can't get his W out in time. I missed my Q, but it's fine, he's dead. But yeah, so a lot of laning phases as Zed against like anyone, um, with pretty much any champ you play, it's going to be a lot of slow pushes into like... Well, a lot of freezing into slow pushing, basically. And there's going to be a bounce. Like, you just play on bounces. Um, and that will give you the most like consistent success because you can't really go wrong with it. But yeah, and now the wave is shoved in. So we base and we buy Eclipse. Right here, I kind of make a mistake. So I'm shoving the wave. I hit my Eclipse and I got a bunch of damage on him. But I see my team is like bot lane and I'm thinking, I guess I should just go and help them. But I probably shouldn't because my team had no ults. I didn't really keep track of that. But anyways, I missed my cues. I'm like, whatever. I ult onto Smolder because I'm like pretty tilted. And then I tank three turret shots and I die. But at least Smolder dies. But at the end of the day, I don't think I should have moved. And we shouldn't have taken the fight because we have no ults. I should have stayed mid after hitting my Eclipse proc at the end there before I left lane. And just keep fighting Yasuo. I could probably ult him and just dive him to be honest. But yeah, because now I miss a wave and it's a bit silly. But the reason why I went for the roam is because I shoved a cannon wave as well. So I know that there's no cannon wave for a little while. Um, and you should only not really roam on cannon minion waves, I would say. Like other minion waves, it's fine to roam. But yeah. I shove mid, my jungler dies and he starts pinging me. So I quickly deafen to save my mental. Thinking we could still probably win because my ult is up. I walk here sweeping and I just go straight on this Janna because he wastes his tornado. And then I'm like, I really don't want to ult him, but I guess I have to. I see Gragas, so I take my ult shadow. Now he has no E, which is great. Now I have keep my conk stack, so I'm actually quite confident to keep fighting. And now I just want to hit my spells on the CC from Anastar. Sadly, the guy flashes, but I know I kill him with one more Q with all the conk stacks. And I walk back in. I need to make sure I dodge this Gragas Q just because it will slow me too much. And he misses his ult, so yeah, we just kill him. And yeah, utilizing the Conqueror stacks really well there to kind of kill everyone is pretty good. I think it would have been much harder if I didn't have Conqueror because the Graves would have likely survived. Um, so yeah, I was pretty happy that I had that rune right there. I'm pushing mid right here, but um, my Alistar is at the Wraiths, so I'm kind of annoyed. <laughs> I don't really want to fight because Yasuo is full HP and it's kind of not the best to kill him. Uh, also, I have Profane now, so the wave is like pushing towards him too easily. I can't really do more slow pushes. But yeah, we get our Conk stacks, he comes over and we kill him, which is fine. Um, and then right here, I think I get greedy. Just go straight on this guy because he uses Tornado. I kill him, but then Graves and Gragas is around. So <laughs> I'm like, oh no, oh, and Smolder, so there's 5 mid. And I die, but I didn't really see Smolder or Gragas, wasn't paying enough attention. I probably could have just ran the other way. So if I keep running upwards and to the left and I just take the plant, maybe I can survive. But yeah. Oh well, oh well. So something that's a little bit important when you're ahead is to make sure you don't take too many fights. 
So right here I just shove the wave, take the pink ward. I was thinking to TP mid, but then Rumble does, so that's fine. And there's no tower top, so there's no rush to go top. And my team is at Dragon, probably going to fight. But I commit to the tower, so this is very important, just in general, when you're ahead, to not, like, be super rushy to help your team. Because this got me a bunch of gold and experience, and I'm chilling, just pushing. And I did not, I did not need to move, and even if I did, I don't think it would have been too good. Like, when you're ahead, it's very good to play defensively and sort of more reactively than proactively. Because if you make a mistake, which is very easy to do when you're, like, making plays, then you can, like, you know, throw the game. Whereas now, I just got, like, a thousand gold in, like, a minute, you know? So, it's very, very chill. Um, and, yeah, right here, I see uh, Gragas went to mid. So, I need to make sure I push the next wave, which will allow the... Uh, tower to bounce or the minions minion wave to bounce back towards us and i'm like oh maybe i should go for the tower but then i realized that gragas is moving back so there's no need and yeah so i have no tower top uh the wave is going to bounce all the way back to my tier 2 tower so yeah we do that uh whenever you know you're in side lane always try to push the wave all the way to the enemy's tower in the mid game because it's very helpful or your like experience in the grand scheme of the game you'll get like a lot of xp lead if you do that usually especially if the enemy like if your opponent is grouping too much then you can get a bunch and right here he flashes i'm thinking i don't need to ult but then he lives with one hp <laughs> and i just flash i'm like fuck this i ult and i somehow dodge the gragas thing i jump on gragas looking cool and all that stuff and then he ults us away so sad so now I'm bot lane, my TP is up in 35 seconds, so I'm considering staying bot. But Gragas shows up, and Gragas is actually quite strong. So I opt to do this instead. Hit the plant to see for like wards and stuff. I see those wards and I'm thinking, well the Wraith camp is probably not warded, so I can walk here and look for an angle. Now I'm just waiting, and I WEQ, and then I go in. Uh, Skarna goes in as well, we get a good little combo there. And then we just basically win the fight from that. Grax was still bot. It's completely fine. He arrives, but it's pretty late. And yeah, so I could have stayed bot for an extra 30 seconds and then use CP, but um, I don't. And usually you do want to stay bot and use CP, right? Um, if you have it up in 30 seconds. It just depends on like situation to situation. So it's kind of hard to tell, tell you like, oh yeah, exactly do this, you know, every time when it's not true. Um... But yeah, like, in this case, it's because Gragas was... He's too strong, too fed in the side lane for me to 1v1 him. Because he's the same level as me. Or he was, I think. And I couldn't really achieve anything bot lane. So, it's good to, like, roam when you... I don't know, when you can't really push any more minion waves. Because it's, like, at their tower. And you feel like you can't achieve much in the lane. You know, at any given time during a game. It's usually good to just roam away. Um, and you can get, like, more value from that. And right here, I don't greed for the tower because I know that I'm, like, big shutdown. So, it's good to play it nice and patiently. Nice and slow. Especially when you're ahead. Always play nice and slow. I end up staying, though, because I see Yasuo was taking the Krugs. And I'm thinking, if he walks upwards to the left, I can maybe kill him. And right here, I WEQ. And I just go in. When he E's through you, you kind of have, like, one... Or you have two choices when he E's through you and um, he has a tornado. You can either ult him straight away, um, or you can wait. So here I ult him straight away, but usually it's better to wait when you know you can tank it. Um, he, hit, he misses his tornado anyways, but usually when he E's through and you have a bunch of HP, so you're like, you're like full HP or half, or maybe like 70% or above, and he can't one-shot you in his ult, or like really kill you, you should just hold your ult when he E's onto you. So right here, I should hold my ult. And then ult after he, you know, if he does Q me, like in the little spinny Q and hits me, um, then I can ult afterwards. Uh, but, you know, usually a lot of Yasuo's, especially the good ones, they tend to just hold their Q. So, yeah, I would say if you're healthy enough, just let the Q hit you if they opt to do that. Because at that point, it's kind of a guessing game. Um, but usually, yeah, usually you don't want to be in that guessing game in the first place. But the way to navigate it is if he hits it with, you know, his EQ straight away and he ults you, it's fine if, as long as you're healthy enough to tank. And if you're not healthy enough, then you just have to ult, I would say. 
and flip it uh, but it's at that point it's like really flip um the best case is where you just do jump over his tornado or you know he just doesn't hit his tornado on you uh and or has no chance to those are like the best case scenarios but anyways i go for a flank here um my ult is up in five but i realized i have 3200 gold so i'm just gonna base and then i'm gonna tp because i have a full item and then we just teleport straight in buy my item just looking <laughs> looking for it forever because i couldn't find it we flash in like this and i ult to know my w's up so i jump out of tower range kill the yasuo as well I missed some Qs on the Gragas, which is kind of bad because he was CC'd, but then I kill him and get a nice quadra kill. And the tower, he's got like 1700 or more gold, so that's pretty OP. Uh, I want to show you guys something right here. So I use my W to go forwards, but then I realize, ah, I'm about to die. So what you can do is you walked back towards your shadow, you throw Qs, so the two Qs hit and you get Eclipse. And then I walked back in to EM to get my W back. And you can actually kind of do this quite often. The thing you have to do is just like really play around um, like the shadow like if you waste W it's fine as long as you can play around the shadow so I waste it straight away but always run back to your shadow and it will be your friend so yeah a nice survive just wanted to show that real quick as I'm recalling here the channel face checks but then <laughs> Alistair hits him away as I go in I'm like what the heck good thing my champ is busted so I can W like 15 times and kill the channel <laughs> Uh, I love that. So as I'm going mid here, I just want to go in. I'm six items, very strong. I have Edge of Night as well, especially. So we just go straight in. And when I come out of ult, I hit my E on two people. So I know I can get my W again. And just kill everyone like this. W again onto him and get some more shadows for more Qs on the Gragas. So I mean, that was pretty sick. But something I forgot to talk about actually is my build. Uh, so the best build right now, in my opinion, is Eclipse, Profane and Edge of Night. Pretty much no matter what runes you go, like this build is very very good and then you have grudge after that. And sometimes instead of edge of night you want to go serpents. But like that build in my experience is the best. So it's eclipse, profane, edge of night, into grudge. If you're even or ahead this is a very very good build. If you're behind maybe you want to rush profane instead. So my team is getting caught topside. I'm pretty strong so I just want to fight even if it's 1v4 because it's like YOLO. <laughs> Uh, which means I take the crab to get vision. I didn't expect Janna to just keep moving forward, so I would have just stayed on my shadow and auto attacked him. But then right here, I E the Gragas a bit, and then I go in on the Yasuo, knowing that that's the only way I can get out. It looks a bit confusing, but yeah. That was kind of annoying, because the Janna just walked forwards if I just auto attacked him. I'm pretty sure I would have killed him with just auto E. And then right here, I should have waited for Janna Tornado because I get tornadoed, which means I die as well for no reason. So that's just a case of not being patient enough and not waiting enough. When you're ahead, it's very important. If I waited for the tornado, I wouldn't die. I would have flashed in and killed everyone. Now I'm doing the Z main thing of taking the blue buff on the opposite side of the map while my team fights. <laughs> because I only care about blue buff, especially because I'm like six items and you guys should too. Um, but yeah, we jump in, kill Graves. I'm like, oh, yep, all me. Don't worry, guys. I'm definitely here. Um, but yeah, I mean, this game is pretty much over. I have Edge of Night, so I just go straight in, realizing, oh, wait, Smolder just got my Edge of Night. So you need to be careful. A good way of doing that is just to W in and then ult right after, or like a second after I W in, because I know Gragas is going to react with his E. Um, and it's usually best to ult someone else if there's a Gragas, because it's harder for him to E you. If you ult the Gragas, he can just E midway. But anyways, the game is over, so thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. In